coming to you straight from the Rio Grande and beyond and beyond broadcasting to the four corners of the globe so grab your seat your coffee or your sundowner okay everybody here we go on point as always this is gloves off gloves off Back at you and gloves off. And I'm here talking with Warren Johnson from Dallas and very politically savvy. And we're touching base on issues that are just came up this past week, like the firing of Tucker and why. Yeah. How's everything, brother? Doing great, man. How you doing down there? Here you got a little strange weather down there in Laredo. It's raining over here, and you know the way people are and the way they drive, it's <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, yeah, it's crazy, but it's all right. Yeah. Yeah, well, that Tucker Carlson firing. Wow, well, what a uh, what a shock that was to the entire world, so to speak. I saw a funny uh, uh, somebody posted something on Twitter, uh, a funny comment that uh, Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself, but Fox News did. Yeah, so they may have they may have signed their own death warrant with that. That's that's a strange. And I'm just very curious as to how that turned out and why it was done in the manner it was done. And so that's going to be an interesting, something to look forward to over the next week or two. Absolutely. And it's going to change, it's going to change the dynamics, I think, of the elections coming up. And I think they're preparing for that. They know exactly what's going to happen, how people are. They learned a lot from the previous election. And now they know that uh, media has to be controlled a little bit more. That's my, that's my thinking. So they're going to stop all the folks that are very opinionated and very vociferous, and they're going to go ahead and shut them down. I think that's what's going on. Yeah, I agree. In fact, Tucker did. He came out with a Twitter feed this morning, I believe, and uh, I copied it from somebody else's, and I posted it on Facebook as well as my Twitter, uh, where he gave about a 30-minute, not a 30-minute, about three to five-minute uh, little video he didn't address the firing. He didn't really address Fox News, but he addressed the fact that he was suddenly free and that uh, he uh, is amazed at how many nice people there are out there. So I guess swimming in that snake pit that he was in, you know, must have been really strange when he comes out and just meets regular people like us who, uh, who aren't stabbing people in the back or even in the front. Uh, so he's. He's recovered, it looks like, and uh, it's just going to be real curious to see. I'm betting he's going to do something like Glenn Beck, where he's going to set up his own. Because why go to work for somebody if you know, you know, he's been fired from three, three jobs. And hey, he's got something in common for me. I was fired from three jobs over the years. That's why I went into business for myself. As, uh, it wasn't any easier, but at least I know I don't have to worry about being fired. Sometimes Absolutely. I wish somebody would fire me, but I don't have to worry about that. Absolutely. You're, you know, you're correct. I think that's what's going to end up happening anyway. I think he's going to go by himself. And um, he already has a name. He already has a name recognition. So people are going to follow him anyway. And um, that's what's going to happen. That's exactly that's exactly what's going to happen. And more and more people are following podcasts than they are the, the actual news and media. And uh, yeah. there are more people are believing more of the podcast because the podcasts are out there in the community. And they're actually talking about issues related to the community that media is shying away from and or does not want to touch because of their own political correctness. And that right there is uh, or selective politics, if you want to put it that way, because uh, that's what's going on with the media. They'll pick a certain issue and they'll pick certain. I guess it's very clickish, if you want to put it that way. Oh, yeah. And uh, so they'll pick a certain issue, certain topics, certain groups, certain 
and they'll forget everybody else. And I think people are going more and more for towards podcasts and listening in that sense. Yeah, I tend to agree. And, and I, I sort of need to get more involved in podcasts. You know, I've done, this is my second one with you. I used to have a podcast for about a six month period, right before COVID hit and we dropped it. Uh, it was more local Dallas politics. And I've got to become more tech savvy. As a matter of fact, when we get through here today, I <laughs> had two computers die on me. And it's probably easy enough for me to fix on my own, but uh, I'm so skittish about not having been involved in it. So I had to make a vow to myself, look, you're just going to have to get more involved, dude, in, in high tech. You know, I'm a 20th century man trying to get along in the 21st century and I'm struggling and I don't want to be, I don't want to be lost. So I'll be, I'll probably be tapping into your knowledge, your well of knowledge regarding podcasts uh, and see how well that works. Anytime we're here to help. And I think, uh, uh... I think that's what's. I think that's what's happening. You see, you start seeing more podcasts join forces and start helping one another, and I think that's exactly what's going on. Because yeah, you know, and I read a book, gosh, back in the early nineteen nineties, and I can't think of the name of it. It was written by a. I don't know if I'm using the right word. A futurist, a guy who he was pretty well known. He. Um, to talk about what you know, we went through the industrial revolution and all the you know the way business was and how the economy worked. And then, and this is the early 1990s, he said the next uh, business revolution will be information technology, It'll be information trading of information. And to trade that information, you've got to have technology. I'm going to try to find that book again. I'm going to try to first off, if I can remember that the. Uh, the the title and then find that again and start just really start over from square one on a, on technology and how to use computers better and how to do podcasts and how to how to exchange information how to how to find information yeah because yeah. that's that's the way the actual how can I say the actual news of each community is going on whether it's a community of real estate or or banking finance or or medicine or whatever, what have you, sports, robotics. I mean, each niche has a podcast of its own. And there's some, there's some podcasts kind of like mine that kind of uh, all over the place, but because you're trying to serve the whole community in general for, to allow people to know what's out there. And um, it's, it's, a different, it's a different world because people are tapping in, into those sources that they didn't have before. And I think it's going to change a lot more, especially with AI and with, with everything that's going on with uh, chat GPT and everything else, you can find anything in there as, as you want. I think yeah, I'm going out to uh, Guadalupe Park, uh, Guadalupe, Guadalupe National Park mm -hmm. in a couple of three weeks, and I'm going to hike up uh, the highest point in Texas, uh, Guadalupe Peak. It's like 87. No, it's not. It's not the Himalayas, but for an old guy like me, it might as well be. Sure. But anyway, so I just accidentally ran across a podcast. Or, uh, a series about hiking and sure. so it, you're right it just takes a, a long from politics which is we, where we've been mostly involved probably everything to french cooking to how to fold towels <laughs> yeah so i'm just fat and that's an amazing growth we've had i guess podcasts really only came how long have you had your podcast i think we've had ours um we're in our we're nearing our 800th episode so we've been and we do it like twice a week um, normally, we try to get about about uh, between six to eight uh, shows uh, uh, per month. This past month, I've been I slowed it down because I'm working on a couple of other things that we we need to get through. But uh, I think it's like the year before COVID, two years before COVID. We've been at it probably since uh, 2016, probably six years. Yeah, yeah so that's really not that long. And it's amazing how, how Five, six, yeah, yeah, from newspapers now to podcasts, and uh, see that's going to be fascinating to learn this. Learn this as soon as I get so <laughs> I get it back up and running. That's great. So, how the know, local politics down there in Laredo? Well, they had a uh, runoff election that all of a sudden it was very highly contested, and uh, it, they came out with uh, election fraud committed by. Ah, certain police entities, you know, certain policemen that actually they got fired this past week or the last really? week. Yeah. 
that, you know, and people say there's no election fraud. And these were the policemen that were changing their addresses, going somewhere else and registering wow. them to somebody. And that wow. to me is like, if it happens at that level, how long has this been going on? You know, they caught oh, like yeah. some, I, don't, I don't know the number, but they, they and I kind of stayed, shied away because I said to myself, you know what? Uh, this has been going on for such a long time. Everybody already knows this and nobody's done anything about it. Um, the police officers probably thought it was just part of the show. This was something that you had to do. Some of them Jeez. they lost their jobs. Yeah. There were four of them to make two. There was four. And, uh, but uh, what I'm saying is it's not going to change. It's not going to change because if you have, if you have it from those departments, I, and if we're here in Laredo, I can just imagine, imagine Dallas or elsewhere. Oh, brother. It's just, you can't, literally can't see the forest for the trees. There's probably so much of that stuff going on. It's hard to just, you know, you got to focus in on one and follow that to the end. As Absolutely. Laredo is pretty much kind of a blue city too, right? Yeah, big time. Big time. Everybody okay. here, well, you know, that the, the I, I make, you know, I have a lot of dear friends of mine that are Republican and, and so, so forth with, with the Democrats. And I tell the Republicans, man, you guys are, you've lost 17 straight. Really? I go, you guys are at least doing better than Dallas Cowboys, but you know, you guys lost 17 straight. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? How's it going? But you know, so I guess Laredo, along with Dallas and Houston and, and El Paso and a couple, a couple of the other large Austin, of course, are the five or six blueberries floating in that tomato soup that's Texas politics. Absolutely. And, uh, we've got an interesting city. All the, there's 40, there's 14 districts. And and all the districts, you've had all of them together, there's 40 candidates, you know, spread out between those 14. Sure. The the furthest one to the to the right, the reddest one, is really right down the middle. Everybody else starts trending toward blue. So that's all we got to choose from, except for one guy is running in uh, a city council district, District 10, not mine, not the one I'm in, but another one, um, who's got a pretty good strategy going on. He's a, He is campaigning as a conservative. He's a hard conservative. And he's really going after and attacking. And he's gotten the... Uh, there's a kind of an establishment candidate. It's an open, the, the, the incumbent couldn't run again because he turned out, but they've got two really strong Democrat opponents or blue opponents, but actually one's, a, one's middle of the road and the other one is, is hard, hard left. He's got both of them scared. And when he gets on a stage with them, uh, he really makes them look ineffective. And he's really campaigning strong and he's something that's rare for a city council candidate he was able to put out all his campaign signs, and he's had people come knock on his door unannounced and saying, "Hey, I want a, I want a yard sign." So we may be pulling off something here in Dallas that was unheard of. And that's get one, just one conservative candidate out of fourteen on there, but he'll he'll have an impact. He's really, his name is Chris Carter, and I've been involved with him on some city issues with monuments and so on uh and and the, the hanky panky that they're pulling and 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 the, the the corruption is so blatant we saw it the corruption is so blatant they just do it and know they can get away with it and no no and they almost like thumb their nose at you when when you do it when you raise the stink about it because they know it's going to go nowhere because yeah. all the election all the judges in, in the district courts are all democrats it's all it's that's the way Laredo is. Indigo, yeah. That's the way Laredo is, you know, everybody. And that's what I tell the Republicans. Excuse me for interrupting. I said, you're trying to get somebody inside that's a Republican. And you're going after every elected official that's a Democrat here. Okay, you have, and, and you're not going to win. Yeah. Because the sheer numbers of the, those Democrats that are employed by the de these Democrat public officials would outnumber the votes that you all have. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So just yeah. the, the employees of, of the sheriff, and I would say the tax, the tax assessor, mm -hmm. all the boards, every, every, you know what I'm saying? All, oh, yes. those, all those employees, just the employees alone, outnumber 
the whole uh, Republican voting entity in Webb County. So yeah. that, it's not going to happen. Right. Let, the best thing you guys need to do is join the Democrat Party and run as Democrats and then switch it once you're, you're up there, because that's exactly what they did with the Republicans. They ran a bunch of Republicans that were actually Democrats. And also now we have rhinos inside the office in, in inside Texas. That's right. I know you're not about the same age. You remember all the Democrats running and switching the Republican Party back in the 70s and 80s. Sure. And they got that. They saw that strategy and now they're doing it to us. So we may have to reverse it. Uh, we have to, and that's the only way we're going to beat them. That's the only way is actually run us a run us a because you see when you use the word conservative. There's conservative Democrats as well. In fact, there's plenty of conservative Democrats. Half, oh, yeah. half, half, half of certain uh, races and ethnic groups are conservative. So when you start talking about conservative ideals. And the, there's plenty of them in the Democrat Party. So the best thing they can do is, is think and run as a Democrat, get people inside the Democratic Party, just exactly what they did. The problem that we have now, Warren, is that that idea that we're talking mm -hmm. about, the yeah. far left socialists and, and the communists have yeah. integrated the Democratic Party just because of that reason. They didn't start a communist party in here in the United States. They just infiltrated the Democrat Party. You know, I heard, you know, Robert Kennedy Jr. He's been in the news lately. He's, he's been a he's been an anti-vax guy. And I saw he. Not a podcast, but a little video, like I guess he was interviewed or something and he was speaking. This was a couple of nights ago. I mean, he was impressive. And if he were running for an office as a Democrat, I'd vote. I don't care how what party he ran with. But if he kept his same values that he had there, I'd vote for him. Sure. And unashamedly so. And I think I even put that on my Facebook page that, that this guy runs for office. I'm voting for him. Yeah. You know what I did this past this past season? I got so tired of uh, the issues within here. My, and we figured out that, you know, you have so many absentee ballots floating around. Mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you get you have more absentee ballots in certain precincts here than actual votes. Yeah. And you we know what a lot of. Yeah. Go so, ahead. Then and and uh, so I said to myself, you know, I went back into the Webb County Elections Administrative Office. I told him, remove my name from from the list. Remove my, I don't want to vote anymore. Mm -hmm. And you can do you can do that. There's actually a a state statute. I go remove my name. Yeah. No, we can't do that. You better do it because that's my law. I mean, that's my right. And I go, why do you want to do that? Because I believe this agency right here is corrupt, and I don't want to be any part of it. But that's just one person. You want to get you want to get uh, you want to get you want to do a protest. Give me 100, 200 people to go walk, march into the elections office and say, remove my name from the voting rights. because We don't trust you all with the election. Yeah. You know, that's that something. Will, we really, Yeah. That will get news. And that's a bigger protest than anything else. And then yeah, that, uh, that could actually start a ripple effect that can get some people in Austin off their seats to do something about it. Yeah, and I think that's where we are right now. I think everybody pretty much, the majority agree, even on both sides, that there's some election fraud going on. And you keep, we keep having these, uh, you know, I keep getting invitations to these, uh, somebody who's going to tell me about how, how they found there was election fraud in this election or that election or whatever. And I mean, they're preaching to the choir now. I mean, we, we all believe that. We, what we need is somebody to guide or lead us Okay, how can we change that? How can we stop that? I mean, just like what you said right there, could go two hundred people down there and say, "Remove my name from the list." That's a start. We need ex we need education on how to do that because I know there's a, everybody agrees, or the, the vast majority does. It's just we're looking for some leadership to to guide us and to show us how to do it. I think. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, you know there is there is a st especially for that. To me, I think that's the biggest protest of ever, if if you had. A hundred people here in Webb County, 200 people here in Webb County, mm -hmm. to the elections office and say, remove my name. I guarantee you that uh, the secretary of state and the attorney general are going to be paying attention. And I guarantee you that every media news media is going to say, what the hell is going on? Well, there's yeah. an election. You guys already proved it. It was proven in court. So you know what I'm saying? That's, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's a great concept. The more I'm thinking about it, I'm, I'm going to follow up on that. That sounds 
that's intriguing to me, Paul. Good, good work. But I think I think that is the only way we can we can let because they they can get away with it. They've been getting away with it on both sides, on both sides of the playing field. Yeah, they've been getting away with it because you get you get uh, some of these Republicans that are sitting in office in Texas and in, in the state capitol, and they hang around with with the Democrats during election time. And the uh, Democrats help them get uh, get elected because they know they're going to get some some grips out of certain co- country. It's it's just the way it is. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's some power sharing going on. You get they get down there for the legislative session. They go hang out at the bars, and uh, they uh, you know you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. You give me a vote here, I'll give you a vote there. Yeah. From from each side, and it's like you know screw my constituents, that's but I want exactly. this bill to pass. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely correct. And that's the only way you can do that. Yeah. I think that's my opinion. I think I, I'm I'm right with you there, Paul. I really am. That's what we need to do. I totally agree. I'm, I'm going to start investigating that. Great to be with you again, Paul. Be safe. You all stay safe. And uh, we'll leave you with this. Everybody out there, God bless you. You too. God bless you, Paul. Bye-bye.